Okay. Okay. Welcome everybody to another Cut the Cord program. Uh, thank you so much for coming tonight. And I hope you enjoy the presentation. I know that I will. Tonight mm -hmm. we have um, two men that are going to tell us all about cutting the cord. Um, I'm asking everyone if they can mute themselves just in case we have any background noise. You will be able to see this on the Lucy Robbins Wells Library website as well as the Newington Chamber of Commerce page and NCTV will be broadcasting it. This is another collaboration between the library and the Newington Chamber of Commerce. It's one of our business seminars and I hope you enjoy it. So I'm gonna introduce Bob Newbold who is the brainchild for this program. And maybe you can tell us about our presenters, Bob and then they can tell us about themselves. Thanks. Sounds good, thank you, Michelle. Um, brainchild um, had this thought that um, I'm very interested in cutting the cord so tonight is kind of a selfish thing for me and I went to Michelle and I said hey how would how would you like to do a program about cutting the cord and she said another one we did that once well I all I know is when I go on uh, what's happening in Newington or scroll around the social media I see more questions from people about, you know, thinking of cutting the cord, how do you do it, what do you recommend, you know, and on and on. Um, so uh, I had, when Go NetSpeed came to Newington, I had seen Mike D'Angelo's name in one of those posts. And I think his phone number might have been there or whatever, but uh, I gave him a call months ago and we chatted, had a nice chat. And um, I have a friend, uh, Avi uh, Smith Rappaport in West Hartford. He owns uh, We Care Computers. And I reached out to Avi and he hooked us up with his main tech guy, Zap Coffee. So um, spoke to both of them and they were both agreeable to coming on to help us out tonight. And uh, I really look forward. I think this is the thing of the future, wave of the future. And um, I, I selfishly look, <laughs> look forward to getting a lot of information out of it. I don't know which one of you guys have started, but it's Mike D'Angelo from Go Net Speed, Zach Coffey from We Care Computers in West Hartford. And um, I'll let whoever is going to start us out take it away. Awesome. Thank and you, thank you. I just want to say thank you to the library and the Newington Chamber for getting behind us. And if anyone out there has any suggestions for any future programs, I th think we would take suggestions, wouldn't we, Michelle? That's a yes. Okay. Thank you. Take it away. It looks like Mike. Yep. So, Zach, you going to throw the Prezo up? Yeah. Let me uh, share that screen out here. Let's see. All right, so we're starting off here. Um, so just to show, um, so as you said, this is a presentation on cutting the cord. Um, I'm Zach Coffey from We Care Computers, uh, Mike D'Angelo from GoNet Speed here. Uh, just to give you a kind of quick introduction on who we are as well. Uh, as, uh, as Bob had said, we are a managed service provider in West Hartford, been around since 2004, just kind of serving the Hartford, Connecticut, you know, the, our community here as far as business uh, IT support. Uh, Mike, I'll let you do the introduction for GoNet Speed and kind of take over the first part of the presentation. I'll jump back in once we're, once we're done there. Yep. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, hopefully you've heard of GoNet Speed. Uh, hopefully you've seen our trucks throughout your town. We're the folks who have been stringing fiber, new fiber optic cables up on the utility poles, um, giving you a new option for your internet. Uh, it's a very fast, reliable connection. We'll talk about why that matters. Um, we're, we're an alternative to your traditional options. Uh, so we're a private company. We're not part of Frontier or Comcast or Cox. We're not leasing lines, none of that stuff. We're a brand new option. Uh, today, uh, GoNetSpeed uh, can provide internet access to about 42,000 homes um, in Hartford County. And that includes about 6,500 homes in Newington, and we are growing every day. Uh, we came to town about three years ago. Next slide. 
All right. Um, so <laughs> here's the fine print, right? So um, we're going to do our best to um, walk you through what cutting the cord is. I'll walk you through the agenda in a second, but uh, everything we're going to um, communicate tonight is for informational purposes. Nobody's paying us. Um, um, streaming technologies change quickly, and we'll talk about that. So um, today's tonight's presentation is up to date as of now, but tomorrow morning you can wake up and something could change. So we will walk you through as best we can what is cutting the cord, uh, your requirements that you need to do that, why your home network matters, how you prepare, and other factors. I will say this at the start of this, um, my wife and I cut the cord about two years ago, and I promise you I was in the same boat probably most of you are in, which is I've heard people talk about this, and I, I, I knew, um, as Bob put it, that it was obviously things that um, people were interested in doing. I didn't know anything about it. Um, and I promise you this, by the time we get through this, you, you should be in a much better place of understanding what it means and how you take advantage of it. So uh, generally speaking, what cutting the cord means is getting rid of your traditional or uh, cable or satellite TV, right? So that, that comes hardwired into your house and you generally have to have boxes next to, extra, next to each TV to make it work. That means taking that and getting rid of that and now using the internet uh, to stream your video service um, to your home. Um, in the most simplistic terms, that's what this means. And you will we'll talk about um, the streaming options and how you take how you get it. The beauty of being able to cut the cord in addition to frankly, saving money and now picking services of the specific content that you want, the TV shows that you want. Streaming allows you to stream wherever you are. So if you go on vacation and you have your cell phone or your tablet, um, you log on and you can stream with you. So we'll talk through some of those things, but that at a very um, granular, um, High level is what cutting the cord means. Next slide. So um, what you need to take advantage of cutting the cord is you're going to need a high speed or quality internet connection. If, if, you're, if you do not have that, frankly, not only will your um, video or TV service not go well, it'll buffer, it'll be choppy. But frankly, anything else you do over the internet um, won't be pleasant as well. Whether you're trying to video, let's share a video conference like we're doing right now, or um, upload a large file or whatever you're doing, you, you, you having a high speed quality internet connection is, um, uh, very much a necessity these days and no more a luxury. Um, you're going to need a streaming device that will allow you to um, transmit your broadcast, your, your, the stuff you want to stream onto your um, TVs or your monitors. Um, you're going to need access to those video um, services that you want to have access. And we'll talk about HD antenna. If you want, I will tell you this, when my wife and I cut the cord, one key thing is we wanted to keep local channels. And one, whether you realize this or not, today you can go purchase an HD TV um, antenna that will connect to your TV and you can literally get um, your local channels through the, the air, you know, if you're, if you're as old as I am, you'll remember as a kid, um, all your TV used to come through an antenna. Um, also, if you don't want an HD antenna, there are streaming services that will actually give you your local um, channels and we'll talk through that as well. Next. 
All right. So this is a big one, right? Um, is my internet fast enough? And to be fair about it, um, you do need a reliable connection, but the truth be told, when you're streaming, all of the um, information that needs to get to you is coming from the streaming service to you, meaning it's download to you. And truth be told, you really don't need a lot of bandwidth to make that happen. Um, this is, we, we took this, Zach and I, right from um, uh, uh, Netflix, where you need a meg for viewing on your laptop computer. You need two meg for standard definition video, four meg for high definition TV, and five meg best for audio and video combined. And to be fair about this, Generally, most internet services that you get are going to have at least this level of bandwidth. Now, you need to make sure that that's reliable, but it's really not a lot of bandwidth to support just streaming service. Um, it's interesting. One of the things you can do if you don't know, when you're on your laptop at home, this link that we've put here, you can click it go to www.speedtest.net. It'll, it'll tell you the speed that you're getting at that point in time to your device. So that's a good way to, to gauge what, what kind of bandwidth you have. I will, I will also add in, you know, it's not a lot of streaming for a single video, but also when you have four or five people on a house streaming, when you have a family, you have people playing video games, people doing all this, you do have to kind of add all that together as well. And that's where that high speed internet really comes into play and having a quality high speed internet is going to be important in that. So while it's not once a lot as, as a single user, a household can really start adding that data up. And especially as we start adding higher and higher video uh, resolutions and higher and higher quality of video that comes out, those speeds get more and more important. Uh, thanks Zach for saying that. Um, clearly, you know, more people in your home using the internet for different things starts to eat up the bandwidth available to you. All right, so we talked about at the start that cutting the cord is getting access to your video content through the internet. And so how do you get, so if you, how do you get that to your TV? Well, first off, you're going to need a home network. And a home network generally means you have some kind of Wi-Fi router in your home that your, your um, uh, hardwired internet connection comes into your home. And if you're going that speed, it'll be a fiber connection. It'll terminate on what most people refer to as a modem. Um, and then that will connect from the modem to your Wi-Fi router. Once you do that, that will broadcast the internet connection to all your devices for everything that you wanna use the internet for. Now, it's key, this, is, this, this will be one of the number one factors that will determine how well your um, uh, uh, video experience and frankly, anything else you might do in your home is do you have a quality router um, to support the needs that you have. So I get asked that often. I'll just touch one more thing on that. Oh, you've got it here. So I'll just touch on this. Um, there's a couple of things that you wanna factor in when you're looking at um, your Wi-Fi service. One, you're gonna wanna make sure it supports gigabit speeds. And two, you're gonna wanna make sure that the signal can be broadcast to every square inch of your home and so the type of router you will need will determine how big your home is, how many floors your home is, what types of walls you have inside your home. Um, all those factors will limit the signal and that'll determine. So um, generally I would offer as a general guidance, if your home is 2000 square feet or less, generally you can get away with, a, with a, what I would call a standard gigabit uh, Wi-Fi router. If your home is larger than that, or if you have unique layouts or walls, you, you're probably going to start to look at a mesh system 
where you can put different types of, you can uh, put different points of your router inside your home. And it'll just extend the signal to where you need to get it to. Um, in this instance, I, this, this says 2,300 square feet, but there's a base station and then there's different um, uh, pieces of the router that you can connect. It, it extends the signal to where you need to get to. Um, we're not here to teach you about routers and things. I would offer to you that um, this is where we care would come in. Um, they support us when we're talking about helping a customer with their home network and they can, they can help you with things like that. Yeah. I will also say, so the slides that we have here are really also meant as a point of research for everybody as well, so that there's some information in here. Some of the, the past two slides are a little wordy, you know, to give people the opportunity to go back and hopefully review some of that, find devices that work for them. Um, we'll also send out the slides to the, the chamber to include wherever they want to as well. Awesome. So next slide. All right. So uh, this is still me, right, Zach? Uh, yep, yeah, this one and the next one. Okay. So in order to cut the cord, there are a couple of things you're gonna wanna do um, if, to, to evaluate really if it makes sense uh, for you or not. The first thing is uh, I would offer that you wanna take an inventory of what you're currently paying for. So even if you have traditional cable TV or satellite TV, Every single one of those services has different packages and you're gonna to wanna to understand, do I have the base package and what channels does that get you? Am I buying the base package plus the sports package that the sports package gets me? What, what television um, sports um, shows? Am I paying for show, you know, premium channels like Showtime and HBO? You're gonna to wanna to take an inventory and if you don't know, you can simply call your current provider and ask them to explain your bill to you. Um, what are the things I'm paying for and what does that get me? Um, second thing is you, you're gonna wanna make sure your internet can support um, once you move off cable or satellite, the ability to stream without a lot, without incurring pain, which would be buffering or watching your video freeze because you don't have a high speed internet connection. And then what, you know, even though you would understand what you have and what you're paying for, I went through this with my wife, you really want to understand what do you really watch? And that's really what a hone in on. These are the channels, these are the shows. So when you start looking at um, what service providers offer that, you can make sure that what you wanna get access to is available on those streaming choices. Um, and then, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Zach, the justwatch.com would allow folks to go to that link, start looking up the content that they want and it'll start steering them, correct? Yep, yep. so you can go on there and put in a specific show or a movie or whatever you're looking for and it will tell you which streaming service has those features, uh, you know, or has that has that option in how if it's a if it's included in the subscription or if it's a pay per rental or how they have it set up. So make an inventory of what you're paying for so you know what that cost is and where it's going. Make sure you have a good Internet connection. Make sure you know what you really watch and then you can start investigating. Um, your video streaming options um, to understand which streaming options gives you the content that you really wanna watch. You'll understand those costs and then you can, you can do a simple cost analysis of, hey, if I cut the cord, um, will I save money? I will tell you that just from being in this business and doing this, there's a high confidence level that once you start to investigate this, you will find that um, one, you can really start to get uh, access to the things that you watch at a much lower cost than what you're paying for today because your streaming options don't make you necessarily pay for this wide swath of channels that you don't watch today. So you can, you can do a little Ben Franklin side-by-side -side analysis of 
this is what I have today. If I were to cancel that and sign up for this streaming service, and we'll walk you through some of this, um, here's what that cost would be. Factor in that you have your internet and you can do your analysis that way. By the way, there's, a, there's another link here, uh, Verge's cord cutting calculator that'll actually allow you to populate those things and do the calculation for you. All right. Um, so I'll take over here as, um, you know, as Mike had said, you know, really part of what the big cutting the cord problem is, is making sure that you can still get the same amount of media, same content that you've been watching previously on TV, uh, on movie rental sites, things like that. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things that we have to take into account. And with traditional television, you know, there's always been a lot, a large selection of channels. You get a lot of niche channels in there that, you know, while you're paying for 300 channels, you may only watch seven or eight of those. And in the past, a lot of those niche channels are grouped into it because that's what kind of helps pay for a lot of those too. You have a large organization like uh, Viacom that has a lot of different channels and the popularity of some of the larger channels really helps pay for some of those niche ones. Um, so you really want to look at and see, okay, am I watching ABC, CBS, Fox? Where are my favorite TV shows located? Uh, what sports am I watching? You know, sports can be part of that difficult piece where sports aren't always available. You can get a uh, direct, you know, um, uh, MLB network package, but there's certain blackout areas where certain things aren't available to you. You have to get local streaming. Maybe it's only available on Yes or Nesson or something along those lines. Um, but just kind of taking an inventory of what you watch on a regular basis, the types of genres that you watch, uh, like Mike said, the local channels that you watch, that can be another factor that can be sometimes not necessarily harder to get, but something you have to pay a little more attention to to make sure that you're still getting those channels. Uh, one of the pieces that helps get some of those local channels, we look at having an HD antenna. There's a lot of different options out there. Um, you know, they range from a very simple 20 or even cheaper than that. I've seen them down as low as $5, but in some cases you do get what you pay for, obviously. Um, and they're rated on a certain level of uh, distance from the antenna. So we can look at um, FCC maps and say, okay, my house is 15 miles, 20 miles, 10 miles from an antenna that puts out these stations, whether it's Fox or ABC, NBC, um, basically any of these channels are going to have a different location to them coming at different, at different strengths as well. Um, one of the benefits to this is there's no ongoing cost to it. You put in that money for that $20 to $100 antenna. Uh, you look at one that has a 45 or 50 mile radius and you get HD quality programming that really suits a lot of those. If you're watching news, some of those you know major sports channels, um, you know most of the time when you see things like the NFL, it's on Fox or CBS or some major programming channel. So it's some, sometimes easier to get that through an HD antenna than it is to get them on an online streaming site. And it's nice because we have, once again, you have that one-time cost, no ongoing options to it. Uh, you can even look at other additional features to it. Uh, there's a uh, company called Tableau, another one called Home Run TV, that allows you to basically plug an antenna into a box that allows you to do DVR options as well. So you can start recording some of those, have some of those actual functionalities that you get with a Comcast or uh, Cox Cable or Frontier, any of the actual TV providers without having the ongoing cost of things. Um, beyond that, you know, there are a large selection of online streaming systems. Uh, some of them are more specific to a specific channel or company. Some of them have, have selections from multiple channels. Some of them are for movies. Some of them are for uh, TV shows or short films or really anything. Uh, really three of the biggest players that we have in here, we have Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon Prime. Uh, Netflix is probably, I believe by far, pretty much the largest provider out there um, as far as number of subscribers. Uh, they've been doing this for a number of years now. Started off when they were even sending out actual physical discs to people's houses and you can mail them back. Um, you know, I believe they still have a very small portion of that going on, but most of it's turned to streaming these days. 
Uh, they do have a large selection of movies. You're looking at thousands of movies, documentaries, TV shows from a large selection of channels and providers. Um, they have a great selection of kids material. They are commercial free. Uh, really generally, they, they've been doing a lot of original programming, whether it's original documentaries, original television shows, movies, putting a lot of money into actually having um, high quality programming for, with a lot of big name actors and actors and actresses in there as well. Um, some of the cons and something like that is that the TV shows generally aren't a current version of them. So you'll see certain shows where you'll have, say, seasons one and two, or you'll have seasons five and six, uh, or it'll change up from time to time where every once in a while they'll change and they'll go and they'll have different seasons for it, or they'll get rid of the show, you know, depending on what licensing they have. They may not have a show forever, but you have it there, you're able to watch it, and then they constantly cycle a lot of that television or a lot of those shows. Uh, there is a 30-day free trial, so if you want to test it, you can go on there and try it. Um, Hulu, another big provider there, they have a lot of current programming as well. So you'll see networks on there, ABC, Fox, NBC, FX, County Central. A lot of other providers have actual live television shows. So you can go on there and watch it either the night of or the night after that it comes out on, on actually on air. Uh, a lot of full length movies on that. Uh, who's been getting more into the original programming as well. Uh, once again, they have a 30 day free trial. Um, and you can also add on Showtime at $8.99 per month onto that subscription as well to really group everything into one section. Uh, Amazon Prime is another really popular option. Part of the reason for that, just because a lot of people already have an Amazon Prime subscription, and this is just an additional benefit to that. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many people I know that have Amazon Prime that actually don't use Prime Video just because they don't even think about it. But when you take advantage of that and you get the actual benefits of that, there's a lot of programming that comes involved with that. Um, on top of that, with the Amazon Prime, you also get free two-day shipping, Amazon Music, Amazon Photos, Kindle subscriptions. Um, you know, they have thousands of movies and TV shows as well, uh, all built into that cost of your Amazon Prime subscription. They've been doing a lot of original programming, really adding in a lot of big names, putting in millions of dollars into production for television shows, for movies. You know, we've seen a lot of, um, you know, a lot of big name shows that are coming to, or big name TV and movies that are coming to Amazon first. Um, you know, for instance, they just came out with the new Coming to America, that's on there first. There is the uh, One Night in Miami, I think was on there first. There's a lot of big name movies that you see that they're putting a lot of money in production and putting out there for as Amazon part of their subscription. Um, also do a 30 day trial on there. And then there are some shows that aren't included in Amazon Prime in that subscription fee, but you can do also a pay per episode basis where you're re basically renting that episode or owning that episode per, uh, you know, I think it's usually $2.99 or $1.99, something along those lines. Um, beyond that, you know, a lot of those major channels you have, a lot of the major movie channels are gonna have their own subscriptions. HBO Now, Showtime Anytime, uh, as you mentioned, Showtime can be grouped into Hulu. I believe HBO can be grouped into um, into either Hulu or another package as well. Um, but you have basically current seasons of those TV shows, movies, documentaries, comedy specials, really anything that's on HBO is going to be available on here. You can watch it on an on-demand basis. Uh, they have it available as basically a live content. So if you have HBO, you can watch that show live with the people that are watching it live on television. Uh, free trials on there. Um, there are some free versions out there. Uh, Crackle is a, is a popular one that you've seen on Roku or on some other devices that comes pre-installed. Full-length movies, TV shows, a few original programming here and there. Um, you'll see some of your not necessarily huge high-budget new films, but you'll see some of more of the old classics that are on there. Um, some things that you wouldn't necessarily necessarily see on some of the other programs um, available for free. So no charge on that. They basically pay with the streaming service. They pay with it with limited commercials during the stream. So you'll get a, you know, a 30 second commercial three times through the movie or something along those lines. Um, available on most pretty much all devices at this point. So it's a great option to have to have a free service, you know, to add some more options into your viewing library without really having to worry about having ongoing costs for everything. 
uh, Sling Television is another one that's also been really popular. Um, it's very popular for the live TV streams. So you can get live streams from ESPN, Cartoon Network, History Channel, Disney Channel. A lot of these really popular ones, you can get the actual live television. And it's more of a direct replacement for television than just a streaming service. Uh, it's available on a lot of devices, not available on Apple TV though, um, but you do have some commercials during those times as well. So it is very similar to, to traditional television, but you have the ability to watch it on most devices. If you wanna watch it on your phone, you wanna watch it on your computer, wherever you wanna take it, you have the option to watch that. Uh, Vudu, another option, uh, is a movie service. It allows you to rent or purchase movies also allows you to store physical DVDs and Blu-rays that you've already purchased. So if you have a library of DVDs you wanna have available to your streaming services, you can do that here as well. Um, available on a pay-per-view pay basis. Uh, YouTube TV is another one that's come up. Uh, you know, as far as a competitor to Sling TV that offers streaming channels, you, know, you have over 85 channels on there, a lot of the big name ones on there. Um, you can have multiple users. It gives you an unlimited cloud DVR to record to uh, record shows. Uh, it gives you on-demand availability. So if you've missed something, you can go back and watch it as well. Uh, it does not have offline viewing, something that a lot of the other providers have had. So if you're going on, say, an airplane, somewhere you don't have Wi-Fi signal, you don't have a strong internet speed like GoNet speed, you can record these things or download them offline and view them offline for them. YouTube TV unfortunately doesn't offer that option. Uh, once again, they have a free trial for it as well. Uh, just a quick word of advice as far as thinking about when you're doing this cutting the cord process, uh, you really wanna make a decision before you buy any streaming device, you wanna think about what you're watching ahead of time. You wanna make sure that the apps that you're going to watch, the shows you're gonna watch, the type of movies or genres, sports that you're looking for, are available on that device because not every device is going to be able to show everything. Some of them are going to be a little more flexible than others, but you just want to make sure before you invest the money into an actual device, you're able to get what you're looking for. You want to also research how those devices work, what features they provide, how you're connecting into them, you know, really the whole selection there because there are a lot of ways you can stream media to your TV and watch it on a daily basis. Uh, Apple TV is one that's been pretty popular. Uh, basically gives you a little device that you can add apps in. Uh, you know, Apple's competitor to Roku or some of the other devices uh, does not have app, uh, Amazon Prime or Sling TV just because they're trying to sell their competitor versions of those instead. Um, there is also an AirPlay feature where you can stream anything from an Apple device, whether it's your laptop or a phone you can stream that to the television. So if you're trying to show somebody from your, from your phone or computer, you can stream those, that actual screen to your computer or to your television. Uh, Roku, one of the very popular options out there, um, they've been around for quite some time. They have Roku televisions now, they have the little Roku boxes, uh, big selection of devices there going from 50 to $130, uh, huge selection of channels, um, something that, you know, we use, uh, we have, uh, my family has a farmhouse in Vermont that we rent out on Airbnb. And one of the things we have there is a Roku TV. And we chose that just because there is such a huge selection of channel and content apps. There's a lot of free content they give you. Roku actually has their own free streaming service that has a lot of movies similar in the way that Crackle does. Um, you know, it gives you the option to search all of those channels. So you can search through Netflix and Crackle and Amazon Prime and Roku, and you can search them all at once to find the content you're looking for instead of having to go to each individual one. Hey, Zach. Yeah. Let me, can I just jump in and say a couple of quick things? Yeah, of course. So um, I know when I approached this process two years ago, it wasn't intuitive to me. So I want to just take a moment and just kind of elaborate on something. Yeah. So we talked about this is essentially removing your cable or satellite TV and going now to the internet to subscribe to services, which we just showed you some of them. First thing I'll say is the beauty about those um, streaming services, nobody has to come to your house and install anything. 
And Zach showed you virtually every single one of them gives you a 30 day free trial. So you can actually sign up, create an account and try it out. The caution I'll give you is oh, virtually every single one of them forces you to cancel. So if you don't, if you don't at the end of the 30 days say, hey, I don't want it, then you'll start getting billed. But that's, that's one nice thing about the streaming thing. The second thing I'll say about Apple TV and Roku. So here's the thing that I know I personally struggled with. So I've got the internet, I subscribe to a service. How do I get it to my TV? Well, one, if you've recently purchased the TV, most newer TVs come, they're called smart TVs. They're, they're internet ready. So the TV connects to the internet and you can download the app for Netflix or whatever and then boom, it's right on your TV. Or if you're like me and you had some older TVs that aren't internet ready, the only way to get the internet stream to your TV is with a device like a Roku or an Apple. Now, Bob, this is for you. <laughs> this was the, this is how I got my wife through this, by the way. So we had a smart TV downstairs. We had a TV, uh, another smart TV upstairs and then two older TVs. So at first I bought the Roku device for the two old TVs and just tried to use the smart TV for, you know, it's already built in. I'm going to tell you, it didn't work for my household because I was trying to teach my wife, well, for these two TVs, use this clicker. <laughs> but when you go to these other two, two TVs that are smart, it's a different interface and a different clicker. So what I ended up doing is I, I bit the bullet. And even if they were smart TVs, I bought the same Roku device for each TV. So that way, no matter which TV she went to, it was the same way you turn it on. It was the same, um, you know, portal that you wanted to get to any one of your shows. And it made my life so much easier. So Zach, I just wanted to take a second because sometimes it's not intuitive of how that happens, but that's what the Roku and Apple and whatever else we're going to show you here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think it's something when you're changing technology from something that you're used to, you know, people have been used to cable television for so many years now that most people know how to generally operate. You know, the channel button does this, the volume does this. Uh, but once you start getting into a menu where you're selecting different things and it looks different on this device and it does this device and you're streaming from a device to something, to a TV on this thing, or you're using a Roku on another, it just kind of confuses things and simplifying it, having one standardized platform across all your TVs definitely gives the ability to, to easily be able to switch between them. Um, so I think it's definitely a huge use. And I think the cost of a lot of these streaming devices is really aimed at being a low cost of entry. So that way you can do that on your devices. So let's see. So uh, beyond the Roku, you know, we have the Amazon Fire Stick, very similar setup to a lot of these um, where you have, it's basically a 30 to $100 device, depending on what type of features you're looking for, uh, really built for Amazon Prime, but does have additional channels for it. Uh, does that high, uh, high definition 4K video. You can look, some of them have additional features like uh, video game controllers for, um, you know, pretty simple, um, TV based games, they have a voice search for things to make it a little easier so that way you're not typing things on the screen. Um, you know, a lot of features that that's one that I actually use at my in my bedroom, I have the Amazon Fire Stick just because it, it has that nice easy remote. It's a small remote, it doesn't take up a lot of space. I basically turn the TV on and I use this for pretty much everything else. Uh, beyond there's also a Chromecast, which is another one uh, Chromecast works a little differently than some of the other ones, at least the, the one up until the most recent version, you needed another device to cast to. So you would open up Netflix app on your phone or on your computer, and then you would send that image to the Chromecast itself. Whereas all the other devices, you're working through apps and using a remote to click through them. The newest version of Chromecast now comes with apps, comes with a remote control to make it a little easier to adjust to um, and doesn't require having a separate device to work from. 
Um, but on the same note of Apple TV, you can also cast your computer screen or your phone screen to a television and watch that on a full basis. So if you want to do something as far as streaming pictures to a device or anything like that, it gives you the opportunity to do that. Um, and as Mike had said, you know, a lot of other technologies, a lot of other devices that do have these capabilities, uh, common, you know, um, new video game consoles, most smart TVs these days are going to have pretty much all of these apps from Netflix and Amazon Prime, Hulu, they'll have that option built in. Uh, Blu-ray players are going to have those as well. Um, you know, really it varies as far as what you're looking for. There's um, basically a, um, you know, not all sources are going to be available on each one. Uh, some devices are going to have uh, Chromecast capabilities or Amazon Fire Stick capabilities or one or the other or both sometimes. Um, but one of the benefits one of the downsides the disadvantages to that as mike had said is that it's going to be different across all your devices if you have two different tvs in your house and one's an lg and one's a samsung those menus are going to look different so you want to make sure that you're actually having the same you know the same technology especially with somebody who's not comfortable with that technology it makes it a lot easier to adjust to it um one of the things that kind of comes into play that some people don't think about when you're first cutting the cord or you're switching to another provider is that not always are, a, a provider is not always gonna have a phone service for you as well. Um, you know, GoNet Speed offers a extremely high quality internet connection, but they don't offer television or phone because there are other options out there. So we wanna make sure that there are you know, options you take into account. Uh, UMA offers a plan, uh, basically $10 a month gives you a phone service, you plug it into the router, you have the same phone service that you have now. Uh, they actually even have a free plan as well. So if you want to look at just a free option, as far as cost savings, most people aren't using their home line the same way, or a lot of people, you know, you get it and it just rings off the hook with telemarketers because that's what's happening these days. Um, but you want to have the option to carry over that phone number that you've had for the past 30 years. A company like Uma will allow, will allow you to port that number over, keep that phone number, and either have a free or a very low cost option to keep that number and have a backup to a cell phone. And lastly, also, you know, you don't want to forget that the library is a great resource for things. Um, you know, Lucy Robbins Wells, there's, you know, the, the DVD selections, uh, Blu-rays, a lot of libraries will offer Hoopla as well. Uh, Hoopla is a free service that offers movies, television, uh, I believe they also offer, a lot of libraries offer a free um, ebook subscription as well. Hoopla offers up to eight titles per month just to stream completely for free as part of a library subscription. So not all libraries provide that, but you know, a, lot of, a lot of them do. Um, so just another option out there to provide some extra media without providing extra cost to it. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I mean, that's uh, essentially really what cutting the cord is and really kind of what you need to to provide the things that you would get from a traditional media service um the things that you might not even know you might get some some increased levels of you know increased amounts of media that you didn't even know you wanted and lose a lot of those niche channels that a lot of people don't watch you know there's a lot of you know not everyone's going to watch sewing television or going to watch uh the little league channel or something along those lines, but there's a lot of options out there that you may get as far as a streaming service that you don't get as part of a regular Comcast or uh, Cox cable and uh, television package. So. Oh, okay, Zach, can I just say at this time, I'm just gonna ask everybody to please mute on their microphones. So if you see it at the top of your screen, you should be able to mute on it. And are you ready for question and answers? Maybe people can uh, raise their hand or type it in the chat. What works best for you guys? Uh, either yeah, either way. So, so Michelle, is there, uh, there aren't that many people. So however you want to do, it's easy. Sure, uh, they, they can just uh, ask a question if they have one. 
Okay, we'll, we'll do it. Anybody, ha are you ready for that? I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to make sure everybody was muted yeah. on there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, then we're gonna unmute. And if you have a question, now is your time to ask. Michelle, I, I uh, just wanted to thank the guys for uh, this very entertaining and informative presentation. Um, talk, could you talk about the, um, the phone for just a minute? Yep. Someone in my house is in love with her landline. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, are there any downsides to the uh, doing it voiceover internet? Um, so as far as downsides, it's not necessarily downsides. There are some, some changes to it. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, we have a, a house in Vermont that we rent that traditionally we've had a landline at. So that way, if the power goes out, people still have a way to communicate. There's not always cell phone service up there. So it gives people a way to pick up the phone. Um, one of the downsides to something like a voiceover internet phone is that you, the, the signal to, to have that line is tied to the internet. So if the power goes out and your internet goes out, that phone does not work. That being said, most times in people's houses, they now have the, um, the cordless phones, where if they have a cordless phone and the power goes out, it's not gonna work anyways. Right. Um, so it kind of takes a lot of that out of, out of play. Um, but you still, you, know, you can bring over the same phone number you have now. You can have a cordless phone in the same way that you have now. You just plug in that same cordless phone into this UMA device or something similar, whatever brand you decide to go with. So instead of having a phone jack that's hooked up to the actual, um, the actual phone line, you have a phone jack that goes into a device that then goes into the router and connects to the internet. Okay, so the same phones that we have now, we could still use? Yeah, yeah, so you'd be able to plug those into the UMA device or whatever device. The, so the UMA has a connection that goes into the router to pick up the internet and then a connection out to go into the phone. So you plug uh -huh. the phone, the same phone jack you have now into that device. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Bob, generally the downside would be exactly what Zach said. If the power goes out and you lose your internet connection, you're generally gonna lose your phone then where in today's world that, that doesn't happen with a traditional landline. But right. everything else, and I would argue, everything else is as is. You can keep your same phone number. You can use the same phones. Your, your 911 service is gonna work correctly. That All was my things. next question, Mike, was the 911 um, yeah. is still the same then? They'll get that set up so it's correct. Yeah. Um, the, the, and I would offer to you some of the benefits of going to voice over internet is some of the features and functionality that you'll get that you don't have on your landline. You can go right onto um, your account and forward your line. You can make it ring in two places. You can do all kinds of things with your home phone service now that you don't have today it makes it really easy. And instead, instead of paying $25.99 a month, I'm paying like $9.99, right? Correct. It could, it could go anywhere from free for some basic stuff up to $9.99, $15.99 a month, depending on. And by the way, there are literally dozens of voice over internet suppliers out there. You got you to gotta just do your homework on it. Yeah, I'm sure most people remember Magic Jack when that first came out. That was one of the ones that first came out that people were, you know, you plug in your phone, it goes right in the internet and it's free, free phone service. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of options out there, a lot of a lot of low cost options as well, you know, for something that's kind of not as popularly used, not as commonly used these days. So one one thing that um, I know, not last year because of COVID, but we're big Red Sox baseball fans and love to watch Nesson and and the sports channels like when UConn's playing and stuff like that. Uh, those channels are available on these, some of the options that you've given us? Yeah, I'm not sure exactly which ones have, I know some of them will offer Nesson or Yes or whatever the local, you know, local provider is. They definitely have an online option for them. 
it would just require a little bit of, you know, searching. Yeah, you know, I'm sure Nesson probably has information on their sites as far as where you can get their services as well. I'm a Yankees fan, so I can't speak too much on Nesson, but that's fine. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm sure I insulted somebody. But yeah, I hope to be able to get into this season. Last year was a bummer, and uh, you know, yeah. Another another week, and we'll be into the regular season. So. Yeah, yeah. So we. Do you have a question in the chat about is go net speed in the Newington area? It is. Um, so let me touch on that. We, we cover about 80% of the town. Um, the gotcha with go net speed is we, we have strong new fiber optic cables um, down virtually every street using the utility poles. So it's above ground. Um, if your utilities come into your home above ground, that generally means we can service you. If your utilities go underground, we're currently not doing that. Um, I, I could go into all the reasons why about um, right of way and, and uh, um, the need for people giving you permission and is there access in the conduit? We're not doing underground today. So if, you're, if your home has underground utilities, generally you can't get go net speed. And I know that's a bummer, but that's how you do it. The easiest thing anyone could do in Newington is go to our website, www.gonetspeed.com. Hit the check availability link, punch your address in. It'll tell you immediately whether you can get service or not. I think her question is, do we have an alternative to it for the 20% uh, can't? Her second question. Yeah, yeah. Was, um, and I'm sorry, Michelle, I spoke over you. What, what was the question? If, for the 20% that it's not available for, what would you suggest as an alternative? Um, my recommendation would be any provider that can get you your internet with a true fiber connection to your home, that's the route you wanna go. Um, I've heard through the grapevine that Frontier may be trying to string some fiber in the area. You may wanna look at that if you can't get go, go net speed. Um, otherwise, it's a hit and miss because, um, um, I don't know, Zach, if you have an opinion on that. Yeah, I think, uh, so Newington, the only ones that I think per, uh, service that area are Frontier and Cox Cable. Yeah. Um, I, I will say as far as Frontier, I know they've been saying they're going to get fiber optic. I lived in Newington as well. They said it back then. I wouldn't hold my breath on it. Um, I mean, I think GoNet Speed is the choice that I would make to that. If GoNet Speed wasn't available, I would probably back up to Cox Cable and then lastly, Frontier. So I'm looking at some of the comments, by the way, in the chat. And somebody, uh, Diane, said, hope it comes to Plainville. Um, I will tell you that Plainville looks like it'll be on the docket later this year. So that'll probably come out in a press release or uh, a, a public release in the next couple of months. Uh, Mr. Ferguson, were you raising your hand earlier? Here's a picture of my man cave. I've got three TVs. There you go. And I have uh, two remotes that. Lost calling that. go net speed calling go net speed <laughs> Rod, where do you live i gotta get to your house quick <laughs> 911 <laughs> well, what were you saying about the the tvs and the remotes can i have three different remotes to change to three you know different tvs and channels how does how oh. that work uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can look at something like a, like a Harmony remote, which would be able to synchronize all those televisions in one. You could have multiple devices. There's and it a, would just work with TVs because, you know, we have TVs and other floors in the house too. So just, 
you know, that TV downstairs, that's in my basement. When I yeah. change it, change just that TV, not affecting the ones upstairs? Uh, I think it would depend on, you know, what type of TVs they are. Sometimes they'll kind of cross if you have the same exact TVs or if you're using the same, I think the Roku devices, if you have multiple Rokus in the house will be fine because they don't use um, infrared. They use a radio frequency a lot of times. Yeah, we've, we've got one Roku, but that's not the TVs I'm talking about. We got uh, three Samsungs. You know, three different floors. So what you said is I can get the right technology, the right equipment. I can change all three channels down there, right? Yeah. So if you so that yeah, there's all a company, three TVs for so, three so different. Yeah. So Logitech makes a makes a remote series called Harmony. So there's a Logitech Harmony remote. There's a bunch of different Harmony. ones. Yep. And they're um, almost like a smart remote kind of. So you can plug in multiple things. They have a touch screen on them. Oh. Yeah. So you can go back and forth between different TVs and you can label it TV one, TV two, TV three, and switch back and forth. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Very, thank you very much. Good presentation, man. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, what I, what about what I mentioned about my son using his cell phone as remote? Yeah, so some, um, you know, some of those applications, some of those, um, the Chromecast, you can cast from your phone to a Chromecast. So you would open up Netflix on your phone, hit the cast button and choose a TV and just cast that to it. And then you can control it from your phone as well. Uh, some phones even have an infrared. I used to have a phone, an LG phone that had an infrared um, and a smart remote on there. So you could program it was like a universal remote built into your phone. So there's a few different options. Most importantly, what he's doing is he's casting to a device from his phone now. Yeah. So Bob, it's, you know, it's, uh, here's my cell phone. I would go on the internet, go on the website for Netflix, if you will, pull up my Netflix account. I could be watching my Netflix show right here. And if I have a Chromecast attached to my TV, I could cast this to whatever I'm watching here, right to my TV, and then everyone can watch it. Nice. nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you'll see uh, the cast button is almost always the same on most devices. Uh, it looks almost like a Wi-Fi signal. It looks like a computer with three little lines coming off the edge of it. Let's see. Yeah. Mm. Any uh, other questions out there? I guess not. So, folks, I know there was a lot of information. I got one other question about the DVR. Yeah. Go ahead, Bob. Just want to ask about the DVR. If you if you record a show on the DVR, um, can you watch it on any of the TVs or only one TV? What? So if you have, uh, for instance, YouTube TV has a DVR functionality built into it. So if you have, if you use YouTube TV, you can watch it on any television. Um, there's a device called a home run TV. And basically what you do yeah. is, you, is you plug the antenna into that device. And then you can watch that, that uh, over the air channel on any device in your network. And you can record to that device and watch it from any, any, any device in your network. So if you have one of those home run TV devices, you can watch it on any TV you want. Okay. Yeah, I think they're like a hundred bucks usually, hundred, hundred and fifty. Very important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what would be the, what would be the suggestion? There's so many. My wife was just saying how it sounds a little complicated for some of these things about multiple TVs, uh, multiple, you know, being able to play DVR and things like that, remotes and all that. Um, who could we turn to, to get good information on that? Where would you go? Yeah, I mean, if you have any questions, you know, you can feel free to call our offices. Um, we care computers in West Hartford. Um, you know, you can call us, you can email us. We'd be happy to give you some information on things. <clears throat> So Bob, WeCare is a, a partner of Go NetSpeed, and 
When we find our customers with home networking questions like this, uh, we refer them to WeCare. WeCare will uh, walk, talk you through a couple of things. And then um, if you actually need them to help you install some of this stuff, you, they'll, they'll help you out with that as well with the, with the quote. Sounds good. Appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Do we have any last questions? Otherwise, I thank you very much for a very enlightening program. And um, I'm sure interested in learning more about cutting the cord. We, you know, we've done it a little bit here, but trying to go a little further. And I think you guys gave us a lot of great information. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Very good. Thanks. Thanks yeah. again for the time. We're happy to help. Yeah. Okay. And again, you can um, go on our library website in the next few days and you'll be able to see this. If you just click on the cut the cord, another cut the cord program, you'll be able to see that. And I thank you all. Good night, Thanks. Michelle Thanks and the library. <laughs>